my amazing husband is having to rewire or run me a new line down here in the basement for the freeze dryer. It is tripping out <laughs> and not working the way that it should. It should have been fine. Everything should have been good. It's not. We're going to up the power that is coming to it. But in order to do it, we did not have an extra line in the box. So literally starting at our box all the way to the outlet, Aaron has to run me a whole new line in order to get the freeze dryer going. I'm also going to clean the freeze dryer in this video. So stay tuned. We have some freeze dryer woes, if you will, but we're going to settle that. We're going to take care of it today. Join us. Welcome to Modern Homestead Alaska. We are Aaron and Jessica Milnes. We are building a modern homestead outside of Wasilla, Alaska with the help of three of our children. Our second son, Caleb, our daughter, Cody Ann, and the youngest of our family, Wyatt, along with our three dogs, Tipper and Daisy, and the newest addition, Roberto. Aaron is about to turn off all the power, so it's a little dark down here in the basement. We are having some issue even though I've moved everything, there's nothing on the breaker. It has several outlets. Um, the freeze dryer is causing it to trip when I'm running it. So Aaron went and bought the supplies. He's putting a larger breaker in and a dedicated line that is just one breaker and one power line for the freeze dryer alone. And so um, we're going to see how he kind of does all of that in order for me to get that freeze dryer up and running again and not tripping the breaker. Now, it depends on what I'm freeze drying. If it's taking a lot for the freeze dryer, it's tripping the breaker. If it's something light and easy, no problem. It just freezes and runs through the cycle without an issue. But when it's working harder, it is causing it to trip the breaker. As I begin getting the freeze dryer taken apart in order to clean it, it is such a simple process. Aaron is getting things prepared in the basement. While we're working down here, we're gonna jump between the freeze dryer and our water filter system and get as many things as we can done in this video because we do have to head to the off-grid cabin over the weekend and get stuff done there. So I am just right now cleaning the freeze dryer. Get where you want it. Right. Then you adjust the screw and it goes in Yeah, and that's literally the ones that are in the kitchen for the tile. These ones? Yeah. I thought they got some foam and stuff to put it, but that's what we'll put it. Actually, all the way over here. Right there. I'll dig it. Stick it in and nail it. Hmm. No, 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 no. I don't think we'll need much more. Oh, oh. Mm -hmm. They're taking the kinks out. Okay. What are you filling up the water for? Mm, let's see, where is the other one? Oh, it shuts. That's too low. Come down. Turn this off. So what are you actually doing? Huh? Shutting off the water to the house. Everything else, letting everything start draining back. So I can change the water filter. So I said earlier, massive amount of chores that have to get done as we prepare for winter. And <clears throat> our uh, well water has some issues with it. And so we have this filter system down here Aaron's going to change these big filters and then there's one under the kitchen sink we change as well. We have, what happens is the water comes into the house from the well. It goes through these filters into this pressure tank and then that pressure tank sends the water to the water heater 
or the rest of the house. So everything that comes through our house is filtered through these filters. They have to be changed. I'll have Aaron actually tell us a little bit about it now. I probably should say, don't, don't do that. So this is our water that goes first to the filter that you're draining, right? And so you can see how bad the quality of the water is prior to being filtered. Oh my goodness, I thought it didn't work. <laughs> you got it. Okay, what is this first filter? Sediment. Does that start out that color? Oh, look. <laughs> Let's see the. Ew. Oh my gosh. No, go ahead. So. This is the new sediment filter. It's the it... first filter in the line. So it starts taking all the dirt out of the water that's coming up from the well. So we already took the old filter off and showed, Jessica will show you that, it was really brown. But that's how they start out. It's a big filter, it's a lot of layers. So this one collects all the sediment and stuff that's coming out of the well. So this is what we're filtering for on our system. Came right from a sample that we had to take from our well when we got the got it done, got the house, about put water in the house. So we have to have a sediment filter, an iron filter, and a carbon filter. And that we're, we replace about yearly, these big filters. Um, we get earthquakes. When we had the earthquakes, we probably want to change them about six months or so because we'll get a lot of sediment. So then we want to switch that out and this will plug up and we won't have water. But this is what's helping save the rest of our uh, house. You can see the color of this clear poly here. This is coming from the well to the house. And then it's got the dirt in the water. But then after the filters have gone through, the pipes are clear still. So this is where, this is what saves the rest of our equipment from my hot water heater filling completely full of mud. Okay. And then, is this what everyone would filter for? No, you're gonna have to have a, a sample done on your personal well. 
um, every well is a little different. And then what are you filtering for in the kitchen? Arsenic. So we have kind of high levels of that. So we have a point of contact filter there for drinking. But not so high levels that the whole house needs filtered. Right. Open that box for me. Sure. Make sure I don't lose a million things that I have it. Color. Let's show them what that filter. You should just show the camera what that filter. It comes with this. It's got that gasket right here, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Show what. You this is um, kind of side by side. How much is being pulled? So white to that gray color. This one's the, this the, the carbon filter. The well, even though you shut off all the valves. So, there was no water iron, in the hall. you can always tell when it's not working so much. Jessica's bathroom starts turning red. Um, the sediment, we would know right away. But that first one's full of sediment. And these ones, that, like this one, by the time it gets to here, there's no sediment at all. But all together, this is probably about $200 worth of filters. So um not the cheapest thing but when you're talking washers and yeah for six people and half five six people in the house all the time it's you know a water heater having to replace those things is plus all of your tile your grout your everything that it stains oh, it's worth the 200 bucks a year So starting out, you took that off to check on everything. You put it back. Why are we putting it back together? So I don't die. <laughs> <laughs> that 
This power's hot. It's hot power. And it's a lot of it, right? An aluminum ladder. Those gotcha. won't work out together. So we're covering that back up so that we have light while we do all this, and then we'll shut it all off when it's time. Oh, nice. Got that right there. Got that right on through there, huh? So here we're running a 10 gauge wire. So we're gonna have to hook it to a 30 amp breaker. And so you don't wanna hook it to a 12 gauge or smaller because it'll overheat the lines and could cause you to catch fire in your house. So we're running 12 gauge, which can handle more amps. Bolts going through here. So it can handle that bigger draw that her machine is requesting when she runs it. So. Kind of some of the safety stuff you have to look at. So you just hooked it to one of these and you put the breaker in on one of these, this wire gets hot, it'll start melting and can cause a house fire. So there's two other orange lines. What are they? Those go to your dryers. Okay. And then there's no other orange line in the house. Nope. Why not? Well, I guess my electrician didn't listen very well. <laughs> but he did a good job. I really happy with the electrician but i wish they would have put me a 30 amp in my garage okay even if it had run the 30 amp to the garage it would be okay sometimes of the year but why not always i guess because your machine is kind of temperature sensitive in the winter it freeze it's drawing all the water out of the whatever you're trying to freeze dry so mm -hmm. then that would turn to ice and freeze up your machine and wouldn't be great so it's a little time sensitive you know that it is a freeze dryer but um so right now be safe she'll be down here have it down here she'll be stoked that way she can stoke the fire and keep the house warm while she's working gotcha gotcha <laughs> why are we not putting it someplace else in the basement tell what this really did cost uh, this, three things i had wire a breaker and a box for two hundred dollars. <laughs> I was like, uh, "You're only going this far. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not going no further." <laughs> okay, so the wire is really that expensive. A hundred and fifty dollars for fifty foot of wire, and so it costs us two hundred dollars to just put the freeze dryer down here in the basement in this tiny little jump span. So let's get to it. Do you have my knife? Oh, there you go, it's almost there. Color your basement used to be. <laughs> what did you like about those now? It just for the drywall or whatever you're putting on. You put it on, do a little screw, zoop, 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 whatever way you want to go. Nice. Everything so when we do finish the basement, 
with drywall, you'll be able to pull that plug out and it still be at the right limit mm -hmm. for height or whatever. Depth. Depth. Depth is the word. Correct. And ow. <laughs> that hurt. Oh, now you're going to run for the wire. So we decided not to show the whole wiring of the, the little outlet and the breaker. The reason is, is we are not certified electricians. We are confident that it was done absolutely correct. However, we do not want you referencing our YouTube video as to how to wire things. We are just showing you the work we're doing around the homestead. Okay, we are without boop, boop, boop. power. So, this is, if you can see it, the new wire. Erin is pulling down and then there will be a new breaker right here. There you go, getting the ground in. All right. The neighbor want. Oh, she's just saying hi. Just latch it. She's got a new home. Let's see. All right, I gotta put her back together. Okay, first this goes on. So the freeze dryer, it's good practice to keep these clean. I'll show you how I cleaned it now. Really quick, look back to clean the freeze dryer. It's super simple. I do it the opposite direction of the way I'm about to put it together as I explain it to you. What I use is a vinegar-based cleaner. This is my food. I don't want a bunch of chemicals in there and all of that. And so I have some Azure's um, all-purpose cleaner, but I had filled the bottle with vinegar and have very little all-purpose cleaner in there. But I just scrub it up with lots of water and then I clean the line out with some vinegar. There is a drain line in the back of the freeze dryer. You can just pour a little vinegar in there. I get it all nice and dry and then I let that middle piece sit outside in the sun so that it can dry completely and then also kind of desanitize it with a little bit of sunshine. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna put her back together. It's been cleaned and dried. There's just a little cord in the back that snaps on and off. There is a drain in the bottom that I used. It just slides back in there. Then the ring goes back on. Here. Mm -hmm. Okay, now she's ready to plug in. Cross her fingers. 
everything's holding. Oh, she's turning on. It's coming together. So, just for your information, edit. I put the freeze dryer to pre-freeze and we are going to do a test run with some kale. I have so much kale that is in an upcoming garden video. We shall see how this turns out. Cross your fingers, bear with us, and I'll let you know. I have a chicken that has joined me in the basement who has a lot to say. <laughs> if you hear Aaron in the garage, it's the next day. We're down here, lighting's terrible. We've been drying, we're at 16 hours on the machine here, um, and it's doing fabulous we're having no issues with the electrical i will touch base when it's completely done we'll see if it dried all the way through that's what i was having some issues with is it kept flipping the breaker in this stage and now it's not so fingers crossed everything was wired fine erin is pretty intelligent on these things so i never doubted for a minute except for the couple of minutes when i doubted how about that all right i'll mm -hmm. let you know the freeze dryer is working fabulously. So we're down here for round two. We're gonna pop everything in, same as always. Push start. It's gonna start pre-freezing. I'm gonna fill my trays real quick. I've got her completely loaded. It's been just over 15 minutes. And now all you do on these machines is push continue and then close the drain down. It's easy, easy as that. We did spend a long weekend of recording. We had to run out to our off-grid cabin where we spent a couple of days doing projects out there as well. Some of those videos have been posted and some are coming in the near future. We've had to work on everything from power to water to heating out there. With that said, if you're new around here, if you'll hit that subscribe button, ring the bell, you'll get notification. Thumbs up and comments do help our channel to grow. We truly, truly appreciate you guys being here, being part of the channel. The freeze dryer is working excellent. We've run several loads through it and I intend come this winter to share lots of freeze drying with you guys. So I hope you choose to stick around and get a fill for some of the ideas that we have going Going on as far as freeze drying, preserving, prepping, all of that is concerned. With that, I bid you adieu. I hope you have a super blessed week and I will see you in the next video. Bye for right now. If you'd like to leave a comment, now would be a good time. Let me know what you would like to see us actually freeze drying, whether it's individual items, specific items, meats, cheeses, meals, Whatever that it is that you have going on that you think, hey, I think this would be great freeze dried, or I would like to know how this item does or tastes or whatever it is, give me some ideas. Pop that in the comment section.